How's it going everyone? Oh, look at you. It's lovely to see you again. Welcome to another episode of Spurverts. You know Spurverts, the show where we talk about everything that's got us absolutely excited to be Spurs fans. And we've got a lot to be excited about this week, haven't we Barnaby? I think we do. I think it's a very positive time to be a Spurs fan in general. It is. And speaking of generals, we have a midfield general. He goes by the name of Christian Eriksen and he performed very well against Swansea, didn't he? He did. I was there. Those two free kicks obviously are what everyone's talking about, especially the second one. Uh, even though I think I enjoyed the first one more because he made the ex-Woolwich player Fabianski look completely stupid. Yeah, he did. Um, but also, I just think he's coming back to match fitness. The confidence of those goals will help as well. Yeah. And his assist rate and his goals rate will just keep on improving from here on in. And you also have a cheeky stat for us, don't you, about Christian Eriksen as I well? I do have a cheeky stat. So basically, since he arrived, he has scored six direct free kicks for Spurs in the Premier League. And that is more than any other Premiership player in that time. Anyone! So basically, we're talking about the Andrea Perlo of set pieces and Spurs. Hey, don't offend Christian Eriksen like that, okay? He's oh, even better. No, no Perlo, no party. Hey, no Eriksen, no Eriksen. No Eriksen, no party. Free, free kick in this case. Anyway, guys, let's move on to our next subject of Spurverts, and it is Deli Ali and Eric Dyer. Now, this particular partnership has got us pretty excited, hasn't it? Well, I think this isn't even the first time we've talked about them together on Spurverts. That's how good this is. And, mm. you know, uh, they've come in, they've kind of been thrown together because of a mixture of injuries and a lack of signings. Yeah. And, you know, it looks to me like they've been playing together for years. It you does, know. it does. They complement um, each other so well. How hard is it going to be for Mason and Bentaleb to kind of fight their way back into this team? It's going to be tough, but that's exactly what you want. They're young, they're hungry, all four of them. And, you know, don't forget, we've also got Dembele who can play in there as well. So it's a great time uh, for us it to is. have these kind of young, hungry players fighting for places. Good problems. I just want to quickly put the question to you. Mm. Out of the four of them, mm. who can't go? Who is actually regimented in there? Dyer, I think. It's it's, be Dyer, Dyer it? is the one who it is allowing the other midfielders to be more progressive, uh, and uh, and and he's just. You know, both Dyer and, Dal and Dali are incredibly composed on the ball, yep. but Dyer is doing a lot of sweep up work and yeah. also helping his back his back force. So. We're going to miss him against Liverpool, unfortunately. Yeah, he's suspended cheese. against Liverpool. He got a bit of cheese, got the yellow card, which was undeserved, wasn't it? Yeah, it was undeserved. You saw the replays, I yep. only saw it live. It was undeserved. But, um, we will miss him, but also, you know, just to bring this up, Liverpool obviously lost their manager. All the rumours, you know, we're filming this on Tuesday, but all the rumours are it's going to be Klopp. Yeah. Maybe he'll come in by Friday, but he'll only have the international week, so not many of his players will be there to work with. So it'll be interesting to see. Obviously, it's a negative, I think, for Spurs that we have to come up against a team with a new manager because they'll all be trying their best. But yeah. he won't have had any time to implement his philosophy on the club, I don't think. I totally agree, Dale. You Let us know if you disagree in the comment section below, you know, that you might, you might think, you know, differently. Clinton NG or NJ. We will figure out how to pronounce his name, but for now we're going to call him Clinton. He's got us pretty excited as well. He's yeah. very up for it. Yeah, well, so he came on, he got about 20, 25 minutes, I think, against Swansea. And his first touch, and he, uh, everything he seems to try to do is one or two touch unless he's taking on a player. What I will say is he's very raw. So his finishing, well, there was one where he actually shanked it off with throw in. Yeah, but, yeah, he hit the corner flag. But I think he's going to be a great signing for us. He looks, you know, really talented, uh, lovely touch. Making some, uh, getting in some good positions. Saying that though, finishing, he scored five in his last six appearances. Um, what for Leon? Yeah, before yeah. he left. And he scored some goals for Cameroon as well. So if you, I think if you get him in one-on-one -on -one situations, he'll probably do well. But he seems like he's a, uh, you know, this happens quite a lot when you move to a new club. You snatch at chances and you're trying to get a goal, you know, and that's why he shanked that one off for throwing. But he looks to me like a, a top top buy. All right. So the next bit of news: Marcus Edwards, promising young talent, attacking midfielder. Barnaby, you've got some special bit of news, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, so basically The Guardian have done an article on the top 20 young players uh, at each Premier League club. Not 20 from each club, but one from each club. So the top 20 young academy players in the country. Uh, Marcus Edwards is our representative. And um, yeah, they wax lyrical about him. What a great hope he's going to be. Uh, or what great chance he's got. And um, also, as I think a lot of you will already know, uh, Bayern Munich and Barcelona have been sniffing about oh, him. And a bit Man City and Chelsea have already tried to take him. But I think by the, by the way it looks, he's, uh, he wants to stay at Spurs. Because let's face it, as we yeah. talked about those players before, your best chance of getting first team football in the Premier League these, these days is at oh, Spurs, Spurs, potentially somewhere like Southampton, but really Spurs, I think. Is Poch going to give him that step up, would you reckon? Yeah, soon enough. Cheeky uh, Europa appearance, not, maybe? That would be really good, I think. Um, you know, m maybe if we weren't playing Arsenal, he would have got a run in the League Cup. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think, you know, give it a year or two and uh, hopefully you'll start seeing him. He's a talented boy. All right, guys, so this has been Spurverts. Let us know in the comments below if you agreed with the topics we discussed today. If you haven't, make sure you subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter at Spurred on TV. Come on, you Spurs. What's going on, everybody? I am Adam Richmond from ITV's Barbecue Champ Man, Finds Food Man versus Food Food Fight. You know, food.
programs in general. Um, and diehard Tottenham Hotspur FC fan. And this is a list of my top five favorite moments in Tottenham Hotspur history. 